Hey, how you doing there? Henry Olson here from Super Simple Guitar, and welcome to another live edition of Hang With Henry. Roll the intro. All right, welcome back. So today I have a really cool show for you. I'm really excited. My good friend and fingerstyle virtuoso Adam Rafferty is going to be joining us live and he's going to be answering some of the questions that I've already kind of pre recorded. And he's also going to be answering live questions that you guys um, post in the group. So um, before we get into chatting with Adam, let me just make sure that everything's running here properly and that I am indeed live. So just give me one second. I need to be able to see your comments. All right, everything seems to be working. We are indeed live. Who is in here? Let me know who's in here. I can see two people are in here so far. So Adam is gonna be joining us in um, nine minutes from now. I'm gonna kind of let the room fill a little bit. Um, and he's going to be taking some questions. So he's going to be playing a little bit live for you guys, and we're going to be we're going to be having a nice time here at Hang with Henry. So um, before we um, you know get into hanging out with Adam, let's quickly move into um, the segment that I call "What's New." All right, where is it? Here it is. I don't know why that was so loud. Um, when I tested, it wasn't that loud. Anyways, let's go on to my screen and check out a little bit of what's new in the group here. So come with me, if you will. Um, so basically what we've got going on is a new challenge, the 70s challenge. And um, it's a big deal because people normally really enjoy the 70s challenge. Um, so I hope to see a lot of you um, joining. So all you have to do to join the 70s challenge is post a lick, a riff, um, you know, a song, strumming, anything from the 70s, and use the hashtag. You can see here um, in the group we have this hashtag. Facebook changed things up a little bit. Just use that hashtag, and we will know that you have posted, and you will automatically be enrolled. Okay, I can see Chris is in here. Hey, Chris, I'm glad you made it, my friend. Awesome. Alexander's in here. Very glad you're here. Rachel's in here. Excellent. I'm very happy you guys are here. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited because my friend Adam Rafford is going to be joining us. He's literally one of the best guitar players. The best guitar player I personally know 100%, but also one of the best guitar players in the world, I would argue, um, especially for just overall. He can play jazz, you know, masterfully. He can play finger style. He does his own arrangements that are just amazing arrangements. So I'm excited that he's gonna be hanging out with us. Chris is asking if I'm feeling better. Yes, Chris, I am feeling better. I still have a little cold. You might be able to hear it on my voice. Um, I was actually in bed for four full days um, with my sour throat. I misspelled it. <laughs> but anyways, with my sore throat, I had fever. I had the whole thing. But anyways, I'm feeling better now. It wasn't COVID, luckily. Um, so I'm, I'm back on my feet again. Thanks for asking. So Adam's going to be joining us. We have the 70s challenge. Um, again, just post something. I think Chris is still going to be sending out pics. I'm not sure. Maybe, Chris, you can confirm that um, to people who um, post four videos. So if you post four videos, if you're a very busy boy or girl, there's a possibility that you might be getting some extra goodies. We'll see. Okay, so that's the 70s challenge. Um, what else is new? I got a new guitar. Oh my God, the new guitar syndrome. Um, you know, I had to do it. This is a exotic guitar. We can talk about it a little bit later uh, if you guys have questions. It's basically a custom strat. <clears throat> um, these aren't mass produced. They're built by master guitar builders. Um, the guy who built this, his name is Andy Hicks, and he worked in the Gretsch custom shop for 10 years before he went to Exotic to, to be the master builder with Exotic. So it's, it's high, grain, uh, high quality wood built by, you know, master guitar builders. Not the cheapest guitar in the world, but, um, you know, when you are 
like me, you can have it as an expense in your tax in your taxes, right? Because I'm like a professional guitar player. So for me, I need it for work reasons, right? So anyways, that's how I justified it. Um, really a great strap. Um, Thelma's in here. Hey, Thelma. Hey, um, it's not COVID, says Alexander. No, it wasn't COVID, luckily. Thelma's here. Glad you guys are all here. Adam's going to be joining us in about five minutes. Alexander says, congrats, it's beautiful. I know I haven't talked about the PRS yet. I'm going to. The PRS is also incredible. Um, I kind of feel a little bit like I shouldn't have so many good guitars, but I guess I worked hard for it and it took a long time. Like it took a long time. I don't take it for granted at all. But, um, you know, with the Strat, like I love the PRS, but the Strat, it's just I'm, I'm a Strat guy, so I thought I, I need to get like a really good Strat, and that, that's what this is. So anyways, new guitar, you guys can see it. Um, it has a baked maple neck. So they, they bake the neck, um, which takes out all the impurities. So all the moisture, all the extra liquid that was maybe in there, it all gets totally crystallized and really dry, and it's um, super... I don't know if you can really hear that, but it's super resonant. Like it really has a sound. <clears throat> so anyways, um, yeah, Henry Olsen original, right? They don't make like two of the same guitars normally. So they really are custom guitars. Anyways, I was naughty. I, I went for it. But, you know, I think I'm going to play this forever. And, you know, so anyways. <laughs> All right. So what else is new? Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do a live stream next week because I'm going to have to go to Croatia. I kind of have a family um, issue there. My mom isn't really feeling that well. So we're going to try to actually get her into a nursing home. So I'm going to be away um, for probably a week, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. We'll see. So I kind of have family issues. So unfortunately, next Friday, I'm also not going to be able to be with you, but hopefully in two weeks I will. So that's um, the family issue. Um, and what else is there to talk about? Um, Vanessa, that's the last thing. Um, for the past couple of weeks, I've been telling you about my student, Vanessa, who made it to um, like the Austrian version of America's Got Talent. Um, she didn't win, but she got third place. So she did very, very well. I'm very proud of her. Um, and now she's kind of like in the recording studio. I think she's really gonna make a name for herself. Um, during the time she was there, she, um, we were talking about recording a video together here. Um, but I don't, I don't really think that's going to happen anymore. Cause she's like a star now and she's 16, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, she wants to play with me cause we, we really had a good relationship and I'm so proud of her, but we'll see if she actually comes to hang out. Gunther probably knows her. Vanessa Duhofa, you know, Vanessa Duhofa, right? Everyone in Austria knows her. Uh, Chris says, hope everything goes well with your mom. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I figure I might as well tell you guys what's going on rather than just, um, you know, beat around the bushes. Um, yeah, my mom's 71. So she's slowly getting of age and starting to forget things. So it's probably best to get her um, in, into a nursing home. So that's what we're going to try to do next week. We'll see. Um, my sister is also coming. So I'm going to see my sister. Yeah, yeah, family is, family is family. You got to do what you got to do, you know, and my mom was really always there for me, so, you know, yeah. Anyways, do you guys have any questions for Adam? If you have any questions for Adam, um, post them in the comments. He's going to be joining us in one minute. He's, he's probably going to be on time. Adam's normally on time. Um, I guess I'll start kind of int introducing him since there's so much. Um, I have this whole huge list of what what to say. Um, wait a second. Let me get into the headshot. So um, let me start introducing him. And probably by the time I'm done, he'll be here. So um, Adam Rafferty played jazz guitar in New York City with some of the top guys for over 20 years. And he was mentored by this guy named um, Mike Longo, who played with Dizzy Gillespie. And, you know, I don't really, I'm not a total jazz guy or not a jazz guy really at all. But Dizzy Gillespie is like, I don't know, you could say like one of the greats, like Jimi Hendrix or Steve Ray Vaughan. Like he, he's a jazz legend. And Mike Longo, who is Adam's teacher, is was also a jazz legend. He unfortunately passed due to COVID last year. 
So um, Adam studied with him. He played in his band. He was a jazz musician for almost uh, for over 20 years, playing with some of the top guys in New York City, right? Um, but you know, unfortunately, it's hard to make a million dollars playing jazz or even make a living. I mean, he made a living, but it's just not easy with jazz. So um, you know, Adam, very flexible musician, very skillful musician, kind of transitioned to fingerstyle, and that's where he really had his uh, moment of fame, where it really clicked for him. So after that, he performed with Tommy Emanuel on multiple occasions. Um, you can actually find the videos on YouTube. Um, we might even watch one afterwards. Just really cool performances with Tommy. All right, he's here. I'm going to have him in the green room. All right, Adam, you're in the green room. I'm introducing you. I started because there was so much to talk about. I'll bring you out in just one second. So he played with Tommy Emanuel on multiple occasions. Um, he toured the world playing finger style, you know, America, Australia, Russia, all over Europe. You know, he's really, truly been around the world um, playing finger style. He also pioneered um, as one of the first finger style guitar players on YouTube. You know, um, I remember checking him out in the early days and he was doing things that I never saw. And all these young cats that you see, you know, banging on their guitars and doing all these um, really interesting acoustic things. A lot of them were influenced by Adam. He's really one of the first guys that really pushed the needle. Um, and actually, if you search um, fingerstyle guitar on Wikipedia, he's one of the guys that pops up as one of the guys that kind of, you know, got it all started. He has a excellent book that I highly recommend you getting. Um, it's called Inner Game of Fingerstyle Guitar, The Inner Game of Fingerstyle Guitar. How to Blend Your Intuition, Intellect, and Emotions to Achieve Guitar Mastery. It's a really great book. I started reading it, and I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to finish. So make sure to go pick up this book. It's on Amazon. Um, you know, you'll get it tomorrow if you order it on Prime. All right, we're almost done. He has a podcast called The Fingerstyle Guitar Hangout. Very busy guy, this Adam, um, where he has, again, top fingerstyle um, guitarists as guests that come and talk about what they're up to, right? And last but not least, study with Adam where you can get um, personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, kind of like what I have, but um, an even deeper level where you send him his videos and he sends you video replies. So that's really cool. Check it all out. And there's also some free lessons. Um, I linked it in the description of this live stream. So it's adamrafferty.com forward slash lessons. You can go there and get some of his free stuff. All right, without further ado, and of course, he's also one of my best friends. We've really been great friends for the past uh, almost 10 years. And he's also, I'd consider him a mentor because he really, really helped me when I was getting started, um, you know, trying to somehow make a living out of this. So Adam, all around great guy. Very happy to know you. Let's bring him in, everybody. Um, one second here. One second. All right. I don't know why that was so loud. Sorry. All right, man, you're in. You're in. We're live. All righty. Can, can cool. you hear me? I hear you well, man. Oh, wow. Your background looks great. You're looking sweet. Oh, thanks. Very yeah. nice. All right, man. So yeah, I kind of thought maybe you'd play us a song or two, and then we'll take some questions. I've got some questions from the group. Um, and sure. Just take it from there. You want to you wanna play something? Do you, you got, got any requests? requests? Um, do we have any requests? I well, no, don't no, know. You, Henry, you, you know, know my, my material. material. <laughs> um, I don't want to say, play uh, Masquinada. Okay. That's a nice one. Masquinata I heard you playing that before. For the, for the, for the, for the Corona mask. Masquinada. Yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm going to take, take my headphones off because I'm getting an echo. All right, man. No worries. And hey, everybody out there in Internet land, we, are, we did a sound check and we're doing our best with the sound. You know, it's uh, we're still ironing. All right, so, okay, here we go. All right, man, I'm going to put you on the solo.
Awesome. Wow. Let me just. It's funny, man. I, I'm nervous, nervous that, not, not bad, bad nervous, nervous, but it's, it's really that different, different concentration, like when you get on stage for a concert. It's different from practicing. Yeah, yeah. I it was. I could, I could tell it was different from when we were doing like the sound check thing. Like now you were really going for it. It was interesting to watch it, to see that difference. Very cool, yeah. man. Sounded cool. Sounded cool. I mean. Thanks. I always tell people when I watch you play, it makes me feel like I'm just this little baby that still needs diapers. <laughs> All right, still man. need diapers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So we got our first question here um, from Christina. And as I was hey, introducing Christina. you, Christina, yeah, I was telling her, I was telling people how you went from playing, you know, jazz guitar into fingerstyle. And she's asking um, why the transition to fingerstyle and do you still play with a pick? I, I, I never, never play, play with, with the pick, pick these days, pretty, pretty much. much. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, take the headphones, headphones up while yeah, I'm yeah, talking. No worries. Um, I, I it looks kind of funny. funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I never play, play with the pick. pick You're good, uh, man. You're these good. Days, even though I used to, um, it's, it's too hard to keep different kinds of uh, touches under under the, the fingers. You know, it's. It's, it's that, that old expression, expression of being a slave to two masters. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sort of an all-in kind of player. player. So when I was a flat pick player, that's all I did because I wanted that to be my reality. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, this is my reality, just a right hand. And if anybody's curious, no picks, no fingernails. That's how I do it. I'm not saying that that's how anybody else should do it. That's how I do it. Kind of like a bass player. And I still... Practice jazz, jazz guitar, guitar on an electric sometimes, just with my fingers. Uh, I, I think, think improvising is really important. Can you show us some for the jazz mind and for the musicianship? Occasionally, I'll use a pick if I'm playing with a band and I have to do a funk thing, and I just need to bite through a little bit more. But I actually hold it almost the same like the way I hold my hand now. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, so that's, that's as, far as far as the pick, pick and, and the fingers. When you don't have the headphones on, you can't hear me. Is that correct? 
I cannot, cannot hear you if I have the headphones, headphones on. Off. Off. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, but I'm hearing going. myself with like a half second echo, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you show me like a little jazz thing? Because I remember being at the Toscana workshop and you just rip sure. out these jazz things and I just feel like, oh my God, like I know nothing. <laughs> ah, well, well, that's, that's it's, it's a language. language. It's like, yeah. That's, That's like, like if you, you went, went to a foreign, foreign country, country and they started speaking a language, language, you said, geez, I just don't know. I have, I have no, no idea what they're, what they're talking, talking about. about. It's, right. it's not it's something. something. Let's put, put it this way. way. You, you need, need the, the right, right environment, environment to learn jazz. jazz. A, lot a lot of people, people think, think they need to learn jazz. jazz. You have to actually be thrown onto a gig in a higher pressure situation and be forced to start to play. Right, speak the language. And then you, you figure, figure things, things out pretty quick. quick. Uh, do you, do you want to see a chord thing, thing or like a single line, line thing? What was that? Well, I'll let you choose. I'll let you choose. I guess maybe a oh, chord this. thing. A chord thing would be interesting because I remember just watching you play these jazz chord progressions and uh, it was just so second, na 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 second nature to you. And I felt like, oh my God, like what's he even doing? <laughs> okay, okay, so, so let's, 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 let's I got Step at a time. Play, play Henry. Play me a D minor chord, and everybody can do this at home. A, a D minor. Bar chord. Mm -hmm. You played that before. Now, go go to the fifth fret here, like this, and play that bluesy D nine chord. Right? Yeah. Now, here, what I want you to do. I'm taking you from what you know to do a jazzy thing. Now, now don't, don't bar, bar your, your third finger. finger. Use your mm -hmm. third and fourth mm -hmm. finger yeah. so you've got. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, okay now, now the, the thing, thing that, that makes that like a D7 mm -hmm. is that first finger. Right, right, right. So, so it's, it's a D9 chord, 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 but it kind of like sounds like a D7. Mm -hmm. If you move that first finger back mm -hmm. to the third fret, you get what's called the D minor 9. The minor 9, right. It's a nice sound. Right. right. So, so what, what you, you can, can do, do if you're a blues, blues player is maybe lay down a backing track with this chord, mm -hmm. going to what's called, it's going to sound complicated, but it's easy, G13, mm -hmm. so you can go. Mm-hmm. See, mm -hmm. part of what sound. makes it sound jazzy is that each voice is being accounted for. Mm -hmm. when I say voice, imagine these are four singers, three singers and a bass. Mm -hmm. And so that smoothness is a lot of what sounds jazzy because we're not going. Right, 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 right. Or, you know, we're, we're not, not just, just doing, doing these big, bulky kind of chord shapes. We're, we're doing this nice, smooth, smooth thing. thing. So, so if you would hear this, they melt on into piano. each other. Right, 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 right. And if, if you, you even start, start messing with that, you'll hear a lot of songs in your mind uh, that you've heard before, before like on the radio. Like, like what comes, comes to mind is. is Boss gag song. Now, the cool thing about this progression is that you could play D minor blues over these two chords. Right. Sound great. It would work perfectly. But you can also, so you can go over all that, right? Right. I'm going to have to try then that. Then you I'm could also go. Mm. You could start doing that scaly kind of stuff mm -hmm. and that'll fit those chords too. Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. I'm going to, I'm going to loop that um, later on yeah. and, and try to play the blues to it. Very cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Let me get into another question here from Rolando. Rolando has been asking this question for two weeks in a row. I thought it would be a good idea to have you answer it. 
Um, mm -hmm. So he, he asked me, but um, it's great for you too. So he says, Henry, do you have a lesson for the correct way to practice? For example, how long on each area? For example, 10 minutes on open chord transitions, 10 minutes on the pentatonic scale, X number of minutes playing seated versus standing up. So he kind of wants to know about having a good practice routine and kind of how to structure that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you have any what thoughts. What do you think, Henry? I normally tell people to play what they're inspired to play. And I also tell them to start, if they're, if they're working on something challenging, I tell them to start with something they're comfortable with so that they kind of get that juice flowing. And then in the middle, do something challenging, right? And then end it off with something that feels good again so that they have a, you know, a positive experience and not just a uphill battle. I don't know. Would you yes. agree with that? Yeah, yeah here's, here's the, the thing. thing. If, if you, you do... If you, if you practice, practice things, things that are too easy, easy where there's, there's not enough of a challenge, you won't be very happy. Right. That, that happens, happens to me sometimes, sometimes when I'm playing the same pieces over and over again. Right. You need something new and you need something challenging. But if you're up against something that's way too hard, you'll just be discouraged. Right. 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 And so uh, I would say... A good rule of thumb is to practice in 10 or 15 minute chunks and then take five, 10 minutes off in between. Yeah, I remember you telling me that because I had wrist pain um, back in the day when I'd kind of over practice. And I remember you telling me to, to take breaks, how important breaks are, and never to play through pain. Never, ever. I and, made that mistake. Uh, the, the improvement where you think I, I used, used to, to think, think I had to practice, practice a lot, a lot, a lot, like like lifting weights or something, mm -hmm. and that, that doesn't bring you anything. Very often, it's more learning a coordination, mm -hmm. and you have to go slowly, but think of somebody like jumping rope or, or juggling, you know, the, the kind of coordination that they have to learn. Right. It's, right, 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 right. You know, it's not like, oh, God, I'm going to pick as fast as I can for a really long time. You know, that's not, that won't get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I do suggest all your students make sure that your heart is connected musically to what you're doing and you're not only up in your head. Right. It's, it's a, a real, real challenge. challenge. You've, You've got, got to use your head to learn new, new ideas. ideas. Right. But Again, you want to people check out the book. Stay yeah, yeah. you want to stay connected. And I find for me the two things that help me stay connected are the blues and playing with a groove. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I remember. Rolando, you yeah. know, if you're thinking you want to practice pentatonics. I might say set yourself a groove, maybe get a backing track, and do some exploring. And you'll always be kind of pushing towards the edge, looking for something, but make sure you're making music. Right, right, right. Don't go way up in your head and yeah. forget about the rest of your body. Right, your right, right. And yeah, that's why I always tell people, like, make sure that you actually want to learn the thing that you're playing. Like, if it's a song, just somebody giving you a song isn't the same as you truly wanting to learn that song and have that be the motivation. That's absolutely correct. Let me give everybody an example. You know, I play finger style. I'm in a scene of players where a lot of them are country guys. Right. Tommy Emanuel, Joe Robinson, all these guys, you know, they can do this super thumb picking like Chet Atkins. And Henry and I have actually talked yeah, yeah. a lot about this. I always come up a little bit blank in that area. Like I'm from New York, man. I'm, I was like mugged on the street when I was 12 and I grew up on hip hop. And, Were you really uh, mugged in the street? Yeah. <laughs> and I was a rapper at one point. Right, right. When I was like 19. And you have to beatbox for us later. The, the point is, I went through that whole thing of feeling like I should be playing Chet Atkins. And finally I said, I just don't dig it as much. 
it's yeah. great. Like I appreciate it, but yeah. that's not running through my veins. Just the way jazz is isn't really running through your veins. Maybe yeah, yeah, one day yeah. it will, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and you have to respect the wiring and the music you love because then you'll be inspired and then practicing won't feel like a chore. Right. Right. However, I do suggest that everybody always keeps an eye on learning a little bit of music here. Just a little bit. Right. Right. That's that's not a style that I would tell that's not a style. It's not like you have to learn a style that you don't like. Right, right, right. That's more like becoming literate at a language. Yeah, and you have to commit to it. Like, it's not as fun as learning a new song. Like, you feel like you're in school again. So, so yeah, yeah, getting, getting a, a good, good course might help, or getting a teacher. And you go slow. You right. Look where the notes are on the neck of the guitar. Start there. Right, 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 right. Say, hey, I'm playing a C chord. What notes am I playing? Just ask yourself, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, a little interest in that. that. I remember how you would make us play triads when, when I was at the Toscana workshop. Like you made us play triads all over the fretboard and that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Just getting to know where they are and, you know, it, it opens, it unlocks the fretboard for you. And then understanding that if you move a couple of notes in that triad, all of a sudden you go from a major chord to a minor chord or to a seventh chord or ninth chord or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Let's check out another question here. Okay, Kimberly. Kimberly wants to improve speed. <laughs> That's when I get a lot. I don't know. What do you What do you okay. say about improving speed? Ask. Uh, can you ask Kimberly a question back? Is Kimberly here? Um, let me see. I w that was a pre-posted um, question. Oh, there was a pre-email. That, That's okay. Right. We'll, uh, Is she here? Maybe Kimberly's here. She's in Australia, so it's like 1 a.m. over there. But if she's here, maybe we can get a follow-up. I guess you could start to give me some thoughts, and I'll kind of look at the, okay. the comments. I'm going to... There's, there's, there's a couple, couple different, different kinds of speed. speed. One, One is, is the, the speed, speed of a tempo, tempo. Mm -hmm. meaning it's the, the speed, speed of the song. song. I, I think Kimberly's probably, probably talking, talking about playing the guitar, guitar like picking fast. I think so. I think it's more like how to pick. I think that's what she means. Oh, okay. Like when I look at your left hand technique, your fingers just glide and they're all so independent from each other. Well, I worked. I, worked on that. I believe you did. Um, yeah, I believe you did. When I would play fast, I actually don't have a guitar pick here. I might have to grab one. I used a jazz guitar with pretty tight strings, and I used a very smooth pick. But most of the people who play fast will tell you the motion has to actually be very small and you have to stay loose right on, let me grab it's the it. hardest thing let me grab it. yeah yeah show us no worries man no worries i'm here i'm here we're here so everybody adam rafferty he's a cool guy huh um if you have questions for him here live post them i saw gunta asked a question about memorizing songs um we might get to that um, I know, however, um, Gunta, these song arrangements that Adam does, um, maybe he'll comment later. Most of it is he, he learned it. It's not, there's not a lot of improvisation happening. Is that correct, Adam? Say, Say that, that again. Oh, you please? didn't hear. Okay. I'll, I'll get back to that later. Let's not, let's not yeah. change the subject. Okay. okay so, so here I have uh -oh. a really pointy Sorry. Jim Dunlop. 208. Mm -hmm. It's very smooth, too. Right, 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 right. You got the pointy one. It's a little bit and it too, this right? Little click uh huh. When, when you, you just touch, touch it on the strings, strings. But the point is, I did a lot of slow picking, and I used to hold the pick with the downward kind of slap. Right, 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 right. Now, I, this is more like what I do. But you have to really play like. I 
I did, I did lots, lots of exercises, exercises. Loose, 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 but, but every, every note, note like, like a little bullet. bullet. Not, Not hard, hard with, with the, the least, least effort. effort. Right. Keep it smooth. And then that comes. But that is a coordination between both hands that comes over time. Right. You can't rush that the way those two things are firing at the same time. That's so comes over from time. Wiring. Practice is yeah. slow and just slow and steady. You do it without a yes. metronome, right? I used to do these Hannon exercises. Hannon was a guy who wrote classical piano exercises. And I even wrote a book on this. So here I go. <laughs> Sounds cool. And I would keep going all the way up and all the way down, paying attention. Not too hard, not too soft to get that bubbly kind of thing. Right. And it comes with time. This is a little different from total heavy metal, like shredding Ingve stuff, because that's another level that I. Well, this I is like almost the ultimate because you're clean. Like you're not hiding between any behind distortion or you know anything. Like it's just a clean acoustic. You can't hide. That, I mean, that was, yeah. we're gonna hear what you actually played. <laughs> right. I mean, what's that eventually crazy, though for me? Uh, go, go, go. Sorry, sorry, well, I was gonna what, say. What you I was just gonna ask. What's that crazy flat picking song that you play? Can you can you play that one? You know, my, my chops, chops. This is the first time I've practiced touring with, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, what's what's the name of that song? Is that Rolling with Storm the Storm Wind? Oh, Storm Wind. I, I stopped playing it. Yeah, 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 I was wondering if that's one that's in your current. No, not really. Let me just see. I'll just play the first riff. All right, cool. I'm gonna embarrass myself. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> So that's the riff, but I would, yeah, yeah. I would do it at this step like. <laughs> I, I was totally out of practice there, but it was great man it was great it was great it was great <laughs> totally out of practice with that. no man it was but great. i stopped playing that yeah right, as right, i right. said in the beginning because maintaining right two different this, styles yeah yeah no no i've I heard a lot of people say much, that i'd have to do yeah, I'm oh, sorry, I'm getting my, my feedback. I would have to do too much practicing with the flat pick to maintain that one song. Right. It's not worth it. Right, right, right. You'd rather focus on the songs you already have down with just the regular fingerstyle technique that you decided to go all in on. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm just... just I'm, I'm not, not counting, counting on wowing people, people with speed as, as like my, my thing. thing. Right, right, right. But you can, you can do it. You can do it. That's what I really like. Yeah, that you you decided to go for the melody and for the music and for the songs that people mm -hmm. like, rather than trying to be flashy and just all out yeah. showing off. <laughs> cool, man. You want to play us another song? What are you What are you gonna play next Friday? I know you have a gig next Friday. Yeah, my first. Your first gig in a while. Gig. How's How's the preparation going? That's gone. That's gone. I'm checking to see if we have any uh, live about, questions in here. Yeah, and if there are any questions, I can also answer. Do we have any more questions for Adam? Somebody was asking about learning Sweet Home Alabama, but I'll I'll do that later. <laughs> I won't have you teach Sweet Home Alabama. 
Let me see. All right, here's another one, but that's kind of like what we already had. Um, give me a second. Okay, here we have one from Heidi. Okay, Heidi says, hi all, I'm working through Henry's course and realized that I love finger style. That's right up your alley. Does anyone have a recommendation for a booklet of easy, relaxing finger style songs I could practice? Love Henry's teaching in this community. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate you saying that. We love you. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. What do you think? Some, some easy, relaxing finger style songs that people could get started with if they want to get into finger style. My um, easy stuff is kind of already a little bit tricky. Right. Uh, but of course, I have the free trial. So right, you can right, pop right, right. into my thing. You have the beginner course in there, right? There's, There's a, beginner a beginner course in there as well. Right. But, but you know, I mean, as far as easy and relaxing, Heidi, it, it might sound, sound easy once, once you play it well, well but you're, you're going to have to really uh, practice it. Yeah. That was another question we had. How much of what you play is um, just you putting in the time to master it just for hours and hours and how much is improvised? Gunther was asking that. I would say... Someone's asking for the Beatles. The way... Maybe we can do a Beatles tune later. Yeah, Sorry. I'll play, a Beatles. I'll play I'll some Beatles, Beatles for you. <laughs> The, the way, way that, that I, I approach, approach rhythm, rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, is it's kind of coming, coming from, from playing, playing in bands, the, the way, way I might play a rhythm guitar part or play a solo. But, but then, then when I do, I do these, these arrangements, arrangements, because it's such a juggling act, act the arrangements, arrangements are set. set. Mm -hmm. so, so imagine, imagine if a really, really good blues guitar, guitar player, player was on tour, tour with I don't know, or a rock guitar player was on tour with Taylor Swift and maybe played the same solo on each gig because that's what the band knew the solo was going to be. So the solo is set, but that player still has the ability to improvise. So, But there's, in order to do a show where I'm playing maybe 20 finger style arrangements that are rather complex, that's, I have to practice those and pretty much play them the same each time. So how much time do you spend just maintaining these songs, like these 20 songs that you decide to take on the road, how much time mm -hmm. do you spend just maintaining them? Well, that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. I, I haven't been... been I've just started practicing more recently right. this last week because I had a gig on Friday, my first gig in like months because of the whole COVID-19 right, right. thing. And I think what happens is you go through these different stages of learning a piece. Mm -hmm. I usually think of them as four stages. Mm -hmm. uh, Stage one is you absolutely don't know it. Stage two is you're challenged by it and you're like, whoa, this is hard. Stage three is you can kind of play it, but if you're nervous, you might forget a spot or you're on stage. It's, you can get through it, but you have to control it. And then stage four is you can get woken up out of a dead sleep at 3 a.m. and then you play it and you can play it. Right. And that is... A physical, physical thing, thing, like, like you've, you've taught, taught your body. body. You know, mm -hmm. so, so imagine, imagine somebody, somebody who plays tennis. tennis. If, if they, they know, know the motions, motions maybe they, they don't, don't play, play for a couple months, months, but then they, they can come back, back in and kind of right, right, right. Get, get their, their level, level back. You still have to brush it, so brush I'm it up, though, right? Brushing like, off refresh it right now <clears> and <throat> going through them so that they. I don't, I don't have, have trouble, trouble spots, spots. Right, 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 or right. doubtful spots. Because you do you forget, forget little, little itty bitty little things. But, but I, I had, had to put, put a lot of hours in to really get them down. 
Yeah, to me, it's the craziest thing, like the scariest thing, just the thought of being alone on stage with an acoustic guitar and have to cover all mm -hmm. the bases, you know, rhythm, melody, you know, just have it all work. And then just for one second, if you forget, like you're, I don't like, I don't even know what you do there. Like you just have to go through it. Like there's no, there's no choice. But I guess that's also I, something you develop over time, just the confidence and the, yeah. You, you, you develop, develop it, it and, and it gets, gets more bulletproof all, all the time. time. Even now, just, just when I played Moss I was, I was like, whoa. Right. A couple of weird little spots, spots for me. But you, you learn, learn to, to ride, ride them through. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I also, used to. Yeah, I yeah, know. Go, go. I was going to say, say, I used to tour with bands uh -huh. mainly. And, you know, you know we, we would. would have a couple, couple beers on the gig, gig and party and have, have a good time. time. And when I went on my first fingerstyle finger tour, no alcohol. <laughs> I I couldn't <laughs> believe how stressful it was. I was like, man, I'm under the gun every night. Like this yeah. is a whole different. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. <laughs> but I mean, I guess if you put in the time, like you said, like those four stages, if you really get to that fourth stage where it's just like second nature, then there's a you know security that comes with that and a level of confidence where I guess yes. no matter what happens. I remember you telling me that you were sick on stage, like coughing through Imagine, because I know you play Imagine and like you could still do it. Like even though you were sick, you were able to play through Oh it. man, I had, I had, yeah. And what it was, was ridiculous, ridiculous because my, my eyes were big, big like Beaker and I'm looking at the audience like, like, oh God, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna cough again. again. And their audience, audience was just, just cracking up and I'm like, <laughs> Like imagine that, you know, like if you'd be coughing now, they'd all leave the building. They'd all have to evacuate. Yeah. Okay, we have somebody. Debbie's asking for something from Stevie Wonder. Do you have any of that um, brushed sure. up? Sure. All right, because you're I'll famous you. for that. That was one of your breakthrough um, kind yeah. of thing that you were doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, play everybody, everybody uh, superstition. Cool. Cool. With, With this, this um, song, I got, got kind of famous for doing this clicking, clicking sound, sound that, where it's like a snare, snare drum with my thumb. thumb. And, and a lot, lot of people, people do it now, but when I did it in 2008, people thought it was a, a really big deal. So, so okay, okay, so, so here it goes. goes. I'll, I'll play, play Super Superstition. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna take a Uh oh, sorry. Oh no. Thank you. 
my friend very nice cool adam um i want to thank you for being so gracious with your time um thank oh, you for pleasure. being a great friend man um and yeah i guess that's about that i feel like uh we really had a cool little chat here um and it's about that i think anything else you want to talk about That'll, that'll that'll do, do it. it. Just, just you know, know if, if anybody, anybody wants, wants to reach, reach out, out to me, I'm here. here. Yeah, that's the other thing I wanted to say at the end. Make sure to go subscribe to Adam's YouTube channel. And also, um, we both just want to say um, the audio here is not what Adam normally sounds like on his YouTube recordings. We were having some issue with the, uh, um, you know, the the internet and everything. So go check him out on YouTube. That's where the really high end um, recordings are. Of Adam um, and um, yeah also make sure to check out the podcast um, study with Adam right there's a 14-day trial the beginner yep. course is in there right make sure to check that out everything from beginner to advanced and a lot of these tunes that you played are in there too right people can watch that and learn that step by step <clears throat> yes well superstition isn't in there it's okay. available on a separate instructions, oh, right. but it is available. Those are the DVDs, the, the Stevie Wonder DVDs. But all kinds of uh, Beatles and Michael Jackson and Bossa Novas and songs like Fly Me to the Moon, uh, Every Breath You Take, all, all kinds of stuff is in there that can go in for the free trial. And, and you got see. some theory lessons in there too, right? And like the drum lessons, yeah. how to improve your groove mm -hmm. using the drum. I actually bought a drum because of you. And that was that yeah. helped me out a lot. Cool, cool, man. Thanks a lot for joining me. It's Excellent. been really cool Thank having you. you. Um, and I again really want to advise everybody to go check out Adam on YouTube. Check him out on Study with Adam. Um, and I don't know. Do you want to play one more song to play us out? Sure, sure. Uh, and tell tell, tell everybody, everybody. Don't, don't forget, forget about, about the book. book. Oh, right, the book. Right, everybody. This make is sure kind of a neat. Go, right go get the book um i started reading it and i really really enjoyed it like there's a lot of like just not even music stuff but just motivational stuff how to set goals how to visualize a lot of very very helpful concepts and i think it's like how much is it 12 bucks like i i ordered it, it arrived the next day <laughs> five, five bucks, bucks on, on and it's on uh, audible too yeah. right people can go listen to it yep Cool, I did, man. I did the audio book with this microphone right here. Right, right. Yeah, I actually listen to it. I'm listening to Adam. <laughs> That's how much I like you. It's not enough to just talk to you every day. Cool. I need to listen to you, you more. as an audio book. Should I play a Beatles thing? Or I guess, should I play yeah. Kelly um, let's see. Uh, let's ask the audience. Would you guys like to hear Adam to play us out um, with the Beatles or with Killing Us Softly? Let's see what the people say. Gonna take a couple of seconds for them to to react. I guess let's do Beatles since somebody was asking about the Beatles before. Okay, I'll, I'll do, do that. that. Cool. I'll play in my life. Cool, mm -hmm. man. That's no, one of my favorites. 
Now in this one, I'll just add, uh, there's that famous little piano solo that sounds like a harpsichord. Mm -hmm. And this, this is kind of cool. Hopefully, I'll, I'll show everybody what I'm doing. I'll give a little lesson and then I'll, and then I'll play it. It's, it's actually a piano solo that was recorded at half speed. So when it's played at normal speed, it sounds like this double. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost doing this sort of Eddie Van Halen kind of, I'm plucking one string, but ham so I'm plucking the first string, but hammering on the first string, uh, on the second string. Plucking the first string, hammering on the sec uh -huh. second string. So, so you'll, you'll see, see when, when there's, there's this fast thing, thing, it's both hands firing. Now, hope, now that I showed you how I'm going to do it, hopefully. So here we go. In my life. Very nice, my friend. Very nice. Cool. Hey, thanks. A lot of people were writing in the comments, Beatles. They were happy about the Beatles. Cool. Cool, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, again, I um, appreciate you for being such a good friend and mentor. My and, you know, you really helped me so much. Great. So, everybody, cool. check out Adam. Again, he's on YouTube. YouTube is the best place to see really, really great performances and beware you will become addicted. When I start watching your videos, even now I've seen them, a lot of them, I've seen all of them, I think. Even now when I go and watch them, I just end up watching like five videos because they're, they're so addicted Super, to yeah. watch. So everybody go <laughs> check him out. Adam, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And talk God to bless you very everybody. Soon, Thanks friend. for stopping by and uh, thank, thank you, Henry. Henry. All right, man. Talk soon. Talk soon. Take it easy, man. Thank you again. <laughs> all right everybody that was adam rafferty what do you think the the audio didn't really do him justice unfortunately we couldn't get the sound to sound any better um it was kind of a shame for me um because he's such a great player and you know the sound just wasn't as good as it could have been but anyways make sure to go check him out on youtube so um, I'm going to stay in here another couple of minutes, um, then I'm going to wind it down. Um, is there anything else you guys would like me to talk about now that we're still here? Let me just check the comments. <clears throat> okay. 
How many of you are even interested in learning fingerstyle? When I watch Adam play, it makes me feel like truly like I'm just a little baby that can't do anything on the guitar. <laughs> did you guys see that little thing he did, that, that the solo? I mean, I don't even know. Like his fingers, they just moved flawlessly. I don't even know how one would go about that. So um, I guess... We're going to slowly start to wind it down. Thomas says, me hate using pick, says Christina. Um, much, much interest. So many of you have interest in learning fingerstyle. Okay, very cool. We're probably going to have um, Adam on again. Fingerstyle is a very, very cool and fun style. But like Adam was saying, um, it takes a lot of time and dedication to just work on one song to, to finally master it and, um, you know, be able to play it properly. <laughs> okay, Debbie said she played classical guitars years ago. Dwayne says he loves classical. All right, my friends. Um, do you have any questions for me now? Or there's one other thing we could do. We could go check out some student spotlight. So let me know. Would you rather um, check it out some student spotlight together? Um, Bob did a really cool um, Santana cover in there from the 70s for the 70s challenge. We could check that out. Or if you have any questions. Oh, Christina's a lefty. I didn't even realize that. It's interesting. I watched you play, but I didn't make the connection that you're a lefty. I'm actually also a lefty, um, but for whatever weird reason, I tend to play like a um, right-hand player. Um, I guess let's go check out some um, student spotlight, everybody. Let's see what's going on inside the group. Sorry, that was so loud again. Let me let me just let me just make sure. Um, let me try to fix that. I'm gonna play it one more time. I'm just curious if it's gonna be better now. All right, all right, that seems to be better. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, student spotlight. Where is Bob? Bob had a really really cool um, performance in here. Uh, okay, here we go. Student Spotlight, Bob, let's watch you play. Gonna turn it down just a little bit. Bob, go. Thumbs up for Bob, everybody. Thumbs up for Bob. That's a hard bend to do. to play. Oh, 
it's so hard to play. Great job, Bob. Great job. Can we get an applause for Bob? Yes. Well done, sir. Well done. Um, um, I think Christina was asking how long the challenge lasts. So the challenge, Dwayne, I see answered, um, lasts until the 6th of June. So get your 70s challenge in there, boys and girls. Um, what else have we got here? Um, we got Bob. Is that Bob? Yes. Let me just turn the volume down a little bit. Bob is a very active guy. Great to see you posting so many videos, Bob. Cool sound. ending with the percussion there I love it all right so what else have we got here all right let's do one more uh, okay Deborah let's see what Deborah's been up to very nice Smooth change. Very nice, Deborah. Can I play with her? Is the guitar sound okay? Am I too loud? Am I overpowering her? Just a bit overpower. Okay. Uh, better? Now the other guitar players play. <laughs> Just as I was getting my thing going, this other guitar player had to come in and ruin my, my groove. <laughs> okay my friends um very cool thank you for hanging out with me um thank you for that very cool okay Dwayne says much better yeah the last time i overpowered it a little bit too and there's always um <clears throat> well not always but sometimes there's issues where when i try to go play the track my guitar sound arrives 
a little bit late. So I, I'm playing in time and I hear it all in time, but um, you hear it as if I'm late because of latency issues. So I'm not sure if that was happening now. If it sounded like I was playing with terrible timing, then that's, that's why. Okay, my friends, um, I guess I'm gonna sign off. I will see you guys again very soon. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, again, unfortunately, next Friday, I'm going to be in Croatia, so I can't do the live stream, but I'll be back in two weeks. Um, and another cool thing, pretty soon, I'm going to have another very cool guest. Um, maybe you guys have heard of him, um, David Wallerman. He's a YouTube guitar teacher um, who teaches modes. And he's, he was kind of like a hero of mine when I was like early YouTube days. And now uh, we're kind of starting to email back and forth. So he's probably going to be on as a guest as well. David Wallerman. Um, make sure to check him out. He's a really great guy and a really great teacher. And he teaches modes. That's kind of what he focuses on. So um, we're going to be checking that out. All right. Let me, let me play you guys out. I'm just going to keep playing um, until this is over. And then I'm going to sign off. This other guitar player took my solo. Now I'm going to play with Drive. Okay, okay, I'm done. I'm just going to shred if I keep going. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you very soon. Again, huge shout-out to Adam. Thanks again for joining me, Adam. Thanks uh, to all of you for hanging out with me and for making all of this possible, and I'll see you very soon. All right, everybody, God bless. Talk soon. Over and out. <laughs>